friends. Around six months ago, I addressed you from the main conference hall in Manchester in my third week as my Secretary of State uh, role for international trade. And let me tell you what a six months it's been since then. I pay tribute to the work done by my predecessor, who was an excellent trade secretary and who is now convening a diplomatic response to a global crisis. Uh, and I think, as ever, we pay uh, great tribute to the efforts she has delivered so far. She is demonstrating exactly why we are conservatives. We're conservatives and we're delivering for Britain around the world. Since I was appointed, I've closed two trade deals. The first one's negotiated from scratch in over 40 years, bringing our total of trade deals uh, up to with 70 countries worth around 772 billion pounds. I struggle to get my head around that one. <laughs> the first, our deal with our Australian friends from down under, could boost the North West's economy by around 190 million pounds. And the second, our deal with New Zealand, could open the door to greater trade for the nearly 700 businesses here in the North West alone. Supercharging digital trade between our markets by making the exchange of data quicker and more secure, and making business travel easier and more convenient by tailoring a new visa entry route for UK-based professionals. And speaking of digital agreements, we delivered the first of its kind digital trade agreement with Singapore, which I signed just two weeks ago, which is going to take our 16 billion pound trading relationship to the next level. Digital trade strips away costs to the consumer and it streamlines processes for businesses, making it simpler for UK products to be sold around the world. And I'm really proud to say that we've now reached the final stages of negotiations with the Trans-Pacific Partnership, that's the CPTPP, you can all practice that at home, a trading block worth £8.4 trillion a year that will strengthen our economic ties across the world and into the Indo-Pacific region where we want to be building our relationships for the future. But beyond these nation-focused negotiations, my ministers, Penny Mordaunt, Mike Freer, Ranald Jawardner and Lord Grimston, and I are out and about breaking down barriers faced by British businesses every day. In the last financial year, we cut over 200 barriers to trading overseas, ensuring that UK businesses have the best opportunities to sell our products and services around the world. And just this week, Chile opened its market to British pork for the first time, proving the value of agility on the world stage, critical to making that trading just that little bit easier. And of course, as an independent sovereign trading nation, we are setting course for a truly global Britain. So 2022 is set to be a very busy year as we negotiate the next tranche of trade deals to boost all parts of our economy, including with Israel, with Canada, Mexico, India, and the GCC. And of course, we hope the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Trade is a driving force behind the creation of jobs and higher living standards for people and communities in every part of the UK, as well as around the globe. And the UK has a long history of being a world centre for the trading of goods and services. Just two weeks ago, whilst I was hosting the Board of Trade up the coast from here in Barrow, I was fascinated to learn its long history as a trading hub. Over 6,000 years ago, traders from Barrow travelled near and far to barter their axe heads for other goods. <laughs> and I was whilst there joined by our amazing Conservative MP for Barrow and Furness, Simon Fell, and I was able to see firsthand some of his plans for his constituency. We visited a number of maritime businesses that punch well above their weight in creating highly skilled jobs winning global contracts for submarines and offshore wind farms, and exporting the best of Barrow around the world. Through our campaign, Made in the UK, Sold to the World, we will continue to help many businesses from across the United Kingdom 
do just that. Conference, if you'll forgive me, I must mention my beautiful constituency of Berwick-upon-Tweed, also a trading hotspot for hundreds of years, trading eggs, wool, and timber. Now, you'd expect me to say this, but to this day, the Berwick mayoralty remains the most, third most important in England, and that's because it's followed those early trading links which brought benefits to the whole of the country going back centuries. And I am really delighted that our Prime Minister Boris Johnson is so keen to reignite communities like Barrow and Berwick through our levelling up agenda. Because since leaving the European Union, we have built and continue to build trading relationships with our friends and allies from every part of the UK around the world. Relationships that we can rely on, not just for trade, but for support in the years and decades ahead. And it is in times like this when we realise who our friends are. Russia's actions against Ukraine are unprovoked, premeditated and a barbaric attack against a sovereign democratic state. And it is absolutely right that the UK government is single-minded in our efforts to isolate Russia and to weaken Putin's ability to wage war. And we must act alongside our allies and partners, ensuring a front on trade as well as financial sanctions that is united in its actions and in its condemnation. And we will continue to stand by our Ukrainian friends. Indeed, before the Russian tanks rolled into Ukraine, Babcock had won a contract with the Ukrainian Navy with £1.7 billion of support from our export credit agency, UKEF. And we continue to provide that financial backing for businesses trading with the Ukraine. We have stopped all government-backed support export finance to Russia and to Belarus. But trade deals are just one part of what we do at the Department of International Trade. We also lead work to ensure that the UK remains the best place in the world to invest. In October last year, we were delighted to host a caucus of global investors with a combined worth of over £18 trillion at the Science Museum in London. As a result of the sustained effort led by my ministerial colleague, Lord Grimstone, £10 billion of new investment has now been committed into projects across the UK. We've also secured large investments for projects like British Vault in Blythe, which will deliver batteries of the future, and of course, new, highly skilled jobs for the North East. Equally as important is our support for exporters. UK exporters support around six and a half million jobs in the UK, and yet only one in 10 businesses export. So we must change and grow this. We want the world to benefit from the entrepreneurial businesses that make the United Kingdom the amazing country that she is today. And our 12-point plan set out in our export strategy will support businesses to do just that. And they include measures like the Export Academy, providing practical advice, skills training, and ideas for businesses looking at exporting for the first time. Our Export Support Service, we are offering tailored advice to companies already exporting who may want to take that next step. And our growing number of trade envoys who are promoting UK business abroad and using their experience to help us grow into new markets. They will all help us in our mission of reaching £1 trillion in exports by 2030. And as part of that work, earlier this month, we launched the National Shipbuilding Strategy and the Maritime Capability Campaign Office to ensure that our maritime sector is helping to forge new ties for British trade across the oceans. From the Royal Navy's to Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers built in Ross Seif and playing a vital role in keeping global sea lanes open and safe for British shipping, as well as right now working with NATO to defend our allies. To the RSS David Attenborough, which I visited just before she set sail to Antarctica, she is leading cutting edge research which will help us understand the effects of climate change and find solutions which can minimize humanity's impact on nature. Our maritime sector is pivotal to our prosperity here at home too. 
bringing £17 billion into our economy and directly supporting 220,000 British jobs. So what does all this mean for you, for your communities and your local businesses? Well, trade is at the heart of levelling up. It creates jobs, it boosts local communities, and it means that we can pay for our priorities. And conference, we are delivering on those priorities. 50,000 new nurses, 20,000 more police officers, better schools and better broadband. And I hope that in the coming weeks, while knocking on doors in the run-up to the local elections, you will share the work that this Conservative government is doing to deliver for this great nation, both at home and abroad. Thank you. Thank you.